Welcome to the final video for Lecture 2, the McLaurin and Taylor series. The title of our video is Fear Taylor No More, using the Taylor series. So the Taylor and McLaurin series originate with these two fine gentlemen on the left-hand side. Brooke Taylor on the top was the first to publish the Taylor series, and he's the person that it's named after. The actual idea came from another person named James Gregory. Colin McLaurin on the bottom there with the absolutely wonderful hairdo widely used the Taylor series expansion about x equals zero and popularized its use. Now I think it's fair to say that I don't think I have seen any other subject in math that seems to create more fear in students than the, their thought of having to use a Taylor series. And that fear gets compounded if the Taylor series requires more than one or two terms. So if this is you, I want you to fear no more because the Taylor series itself is actually quite simple. And once you understand and feel comfortable using it, you'll never have any need to fear it anymore. So the basic idea is really quite simple. What the problem Taylor solved is the following one. What is the degree n polynomial starting at a particular value of x that we'll call x0 that has the same value and the same first n derivatives as the function itself evaluated at x equals x0. So we're going to approximate some complicated function with a polynomial. Polynomials are nice. We know how to express them. And our constraint is we're going to want to make sure that the function and its first n derivatives agree with the value of the polynomial and its first n derivatives at a particular point, that point being x equals x0. McLaurin did essentially exactly the same thing, except he said x0 equal to 0, which is the most common place where people apply the series itself, but it's important to remember that you can do the series about other points, not just the point x0 equals 0. Now, it's very common when you look up a Taylor series expansion in a book or on a website that you'll find that the Taylor series expansion no longer looks like a polynomial because the limit n goes to infinity has been taken. And one way that you can view this is that if such a limit exists, when we take the limit n goes to infinity, that's actually a way of defining what the full function would be. All right, so let's recap what this idea is. This Taylor series is a natural approximation to some complicated function, which might be difficult to calculate. In some cases, it's hard to actually derive this, the series itself, but in many cases, the series can either be easily derived or it can be found in a reference book or a website. And what the main focus is that you need to know, because when you look it up, it's you know just a series of numbers and, and so forth that correspond to the particular series. What's really important is that you understand what it means, not how to find any one particular series or, or to memorize any one particular series. So polynomials really are pretty easy to understand, easy to compute. There are no infinities, nothing diverges, and so forth. So there are, there are functions that we can be very comfortable with. And so if I have a complicated function, it's only natural to ask, how can I approximate this complicated function with a polynomial? Now, once I've done that, there are a couple of additional questions I can ask. Is it the best polynomial? Is it easy to derive a formula for the approximation for that polynomial? And the Taylor series is so popular because it is easy to derive, and it's easy to show that the first n derivatives of the function and of the polynomial agree. It's usually not true that the Taylor series expansion, or the Taylor polynomial to a certain degree, is the best polynomial approximation for a given function. That turns out to be a bit more difficult question to deal with, and one that is beyond what we're going to be able to do in this class. So our next step is to derive the series itself. So how do we derive the series? We have to fix some notation first. The nth derivative of the function f evaluated at x equals x0 is going to be de denoted f superscript parenthesis n evaluated at x0. 
and that is our notation for the nth derivative of f at the point x equals x0. It's a fairly common notation, one that you've probably seen before, but if you haven't, this is a new notation, and it is important that you remember this notation. We also are going to note that if we look at a simple monomial, a simple power, and I take its derivative, it's easy to calculate. And if I take its nth derivative, that's also easy to calculate as long as n is less than that power plus 1. If n is bigger than m plus 1, that derivative is just equal to 0. So we're going to write our Taylor series expansion polynomial. We'll call it Pn of x. It's a sum of these monomials with a coefficient cm that is a number and then the monomials we're going to use our x minus x0 raised to the mth power that means that so when we substitute in x equals x0 many of those terms are going to equal zero and so what we now need to do is we now need to take the derivative of that polynomial so if i take the nth derivative of that polynomial i find it's equal to n factorial times cn but the nth derivative has to equal the nth derivative of the, of the function evaluated at x0. So we learn that if we can pick cn equal to the nth derivative of the function, f parenthesis n of x0 divided by n factorial, then the polynomial will agree with the function and its first n derivatives at x equals x0. And that's basically it. That is what a Taylor series expansion is. The question of whether or not this is a good thing to do is something that you will learn from experience, but as long as the value x is close to x0, it turns out this is a good thing to do, and it's a very good approximation to the function. So summarizing, what we've learned is we can approximate f of x by this polynomial that is a sum that goes to some integer big N, and it is just the nth derivatives divided by n factorial multiplied by x minus x0 to the nth power. And the sum of all of those terms is the polynomial that we're looking for. It's sometimes called a Taylor polynomial. If we take the limit n goes to infinity, we get the standard form of the Taylor series. But you can only do that in any real calculation if that limit exists. So you have to carefully make sure that the limit exists. And then the reality is in almost any, any actual calculation where we work with a Taylor series, we work with a finite n. And the final point is that if we set x0 equals to 0, then we get the Maclaurin series. Okay, that was a bit formal. Let's do an example. Let's actually work out the Taylor series for a relatively simple function. It's going to be square root of 1 plus x about the point x equals 0, so it'll officially be a Maclaurin series. And the way that you do this is you just start evaluating the function and a number of its derivatives at, the, at x equals 0. So the first thing is if I substitute x equals 0, I find f of 0 is equal to 1. The first derivative I get by just doing the straightforward chain rule, I get 1 half, 1 over the square root of 1 plus x. I substitute in x equals 0, and I get 1 half. For the second derivative... I'm going to get 1 half times minus 1 half, and then I'm going to get that denominator raised to the 3 halves power. I substitute in x equals 0, denominator equals 1, so I get minus 1 fourth. Third derivative is evaluated similarly. I get an extra factor now of minus 3 halves, and that gets evaluated then to 3 eighths. The fourth derivative, also similar, the factors in the front stay the same with one extra one, a minus 5 halves. And when I evaluate that whole thing, I get minus 15 sixteenths, and so on. You can actually recognize what the pattern is going to be and write out what the general formula would be for any n if you like to. Uh, that doesn't happen with all functions that you evaluate a Taylor series for, for, but for a function of this particular form, you can actually write out what the general expression is. I'm not going to do that for you here. But if we put this all together... What we find is we get the Taylor series expansion, which is written in terms of the fn of x's and the n factorials in the center. And then if I simplify those factorials, I get the final version of the Taylor series expansion in the leftmost side of this equation. And that's all there is to it. That's what your Taylor series and your Maclaurin series are. I hope that you will not fear them anymore, and I hope that you'll find that you're able to work with them and use them in a number of different calculations that we'll be encountering in this class.